Okay, in this video we're going to look at what are called logical gates. Logical gates are important in the use of circuitry and microprocessors. So your computer, uh, your car, your toaster, lots of things have a microprocessor. And the microprocessor tells those each of those objects basically how to behave. The microprocessor in turn is uh, comprised of circuits. And what we're going to look at is the logic of these circuits. How do we go about telling these circuits how to behave so that the microprocessor in turn behaves the way we want? So there's not a lot of writing in this one. I've got a lot of stuff written down, uh, a, little, a little slideshow. But in some other videos, we'll actually start taking some examples. So just a little, uh, a little motivation and a little bit of terminology and a little bit of notation. So suppose an alarm goes off if sensors notice movement or if any windows get broken. Suppose you've got to make a... Uh, a, a, an, a burglar alarm, and this is, you know, you, you know, if, if somebody picks up, if the sensors pick up movement at night, or if windows get broken, you want that alarm to go off. So, in this case, we're going to need two inputs. One input is going to come from the movement sensors, and one will come from the window sensors. And we're going to have one output, which will go to the alarm. So, just a little table here summarizing what we would like to happen. So, the idea is, in the first column, we'll answer yes or no, has the movement sensor been activated? Second column, what about the window sensor? And the last column will be, well, is the alarm on? So the first row, if neither of the sensors are activated, well, we don't want the alarm to be on. But for everything else, if the movement sensor is activated, even if no window is broken, we want the alarm to be on. Uh, likewise, if there's no motion, but maybe a back window gets broken, we want the alarm to be on. And uh, certainly, if uh, both of the sensors pick up uh, you know, a broken window and a movement, um, we want the alarm to be on. Okay. Just to uh, mathematize it a little bit, we're going to let X and Y denote the inputs. And we're going to let 1 and 0 uh, denote yes or no, respectively. Okay, so 1's going to correspond to a yes, 2 will correspond to a no. So we can summarize this little table uh, in the following form. And our variables, x and y, are, are what are called uh, Boolean variables. So they're variables that can only assume the output of 0 and 1. So same thing. We've got no, 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 yes, 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 no, yes, 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 in terms of uh, what we were just looking at. So if you've seen truth tables in logic, this is absolutely a truth table. Instead of true and false, we have zeros and ones, but it's the exact same thing. So uh, a lot of circuitry is based simply on logic and sets. So uh, interesting. So, so the device we use is what's called a logic gate, and the effect of it is summarized in this little truth table, how this logic gate would behave. This particular logic gate we've described is what's called an OR gate. And an OR gate is one whose output is going to be a 1 if either x or y is equal to 1. So if either x or y is equal to 1, the output will equal a, a 1. Uh, just some symbols. The little little upside, the little, uh, the little V or the wedge, that denotes the symbol OR. We'll definitely be using it quite a bit. So we can say that x or y is going to equal 1, again, if either x or y is 1, and it'll be 0 otherwise. Okay, so next we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, graphically representing these circuits. So uh, down here we have our, our OR gate, and again, the idea is we have the inputs x and y. The output is going to be this expression x or y. Okay, so this would be the graphical representation of an OR gate. There's different notations. This is certainly a common one. Uh, the OR gate looks a little bit like a wedge. They all look relatively similar to me, so uh, we'll, we'll, I'll try to be extra careful distinguishing those. Uh, a couple others, we can look at what's called the AND gate and the NOT gate. So again, the AND gate, uh, the little symbol for AND is going to be uh, a little upside down V. Notice it looks a lot like the intersection sign that you see in logic. So the inputs will be x, y, and the output statement will be x and y. That's the AND gate. The NOT gate has a single input, x, and it 
uh, gives you the complement. It's going to give you, so if x was equal to 0, the output will be 1. If the input was 1, the output would be 0. And this is summarized in our little truth table here. The truth table for the AND gate, the only time we get an output of 1 is if both x and y equal 1. So um, I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to, in the next video, we'll, we'll definitely do some more examples. I'm actually going to create, you know, or just kind of give a little, uh, a, little, a little scenario where an AND gate would be appropriate if you're maybe designing a circuit. And we'll also start looking at uh, creating diagrams, creating Boolean expressions, uh, looking at Boolean, deciding if Boolean expressions are equivalent, um, and some other good stuff as well.